A very rare weather pattern is developing across the United States, which is bringing some of the coldest weather that we've seen for the end of August in literally decades. Additionally, we are expecting this colder weather to continue as we go into early September, which is basically going to be the temperatures that we would normally see in the month of October and even in some cases early November. Also, severe weather and the tropics are continuing to look like a problem as we go into September. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather pattern that will be impacting the United States states over the next 10 days and we'll begin with what's happening across the country today and right now high pressure is dominating across the southwest but this has also led to a bunch of rainfall across the four corner states and as we go later into today and also into tomorrow we are going to see some of that moisture move into areas like kansas oklahoma and texas and even arkansas which is going to bring the risk for even some isolated severe weather and heavy rainfall that could end up leading to flooding especially near tulsa oklahoma and also near fort smith arkansas Arkansas, where a widespread area of four to eight inches of rain is currently in the forecast. Back over along the East Coast and also throughout Canada, we have a low pressure system that is sitting north of New England. Behind that, that is our strong cold front, which most of you have felt at this point. This cold front has made it all the way down now into northern Florida as of today, and a lot of that cold air is going to continue to sit across the Midwest and the Ohio Valley for the foreseeable future. Now, one of the most interesting things about this weather pattern that we are currently experiencing is that our jet stream and our mid-level flow across most of the lower 48 is currently coming out of the northwest which basically means a lot of cold air is currently being transported from back up in Canada into the lower 48 including the Great Plains the Ohio Valley and the Northeast now this is something we would typically see in late September and even in some cases October November December that is very common during those times of the year but in August we hardly ever see a weather pattern like this which makes it very interesting because the last time we had something like this was about 10 years ago it was actually back in 2014 the last Last time we actually had a weather pattern that set up something like this near the tail end of August. Now, this will have implications, I think, down the road when it comes to severe weather, the tropics, and a lot of other things, including things like winter. But generally speaking, this isn't something we typically see in the end of August. Most of the time, we're just dealing with brutal heat for most of the country. This isn't something unheard of. It's just obviously not very common. We're basically at the peak still of heating across much of the country. Some of the warmest temperatures are observed in the mid to late portions of August. Now, as we go into this weekend and early next week, that low pressure system will move out, but we will still have northwesterly flow because of a high pressure system that is going to be dominating across the four corner states. So this is something that is going to continue to bring monsoon conditions, including lots of rainfall. Additionally, some of that rainfall will make it into the Great Plains as well, including Oklahoma, Kansas, and Texas, similar to what we've seen over the last few days, which by the way, that on its own is not super common for the month of August either. As we go into early September, we're going to continue to see that northwesterly flow kicking into gear across the northern plains in the mid west we may have another shot of cold air as we go into that first week of september which if this were to happen would just make this weather pattern even more rare again we don't typically see northwesterly flow like this that frequently in the month of either august or early september so this is going to continue to likely penetrate lots of cold weather here over the next few weeks which will continue to keep our temperatures around or just below average for most areas in the great plains and east of that area so to give you an idea of how the temperatures are going to continue to be over the next 7 to 14 days these are the temperature not Anomalies, which basically shows us the temperatures from average. So blue meaning below average temperatures, red meaning above average temperatures. This is what it looks like right now. We got this big pocket of cold air currently sitting across the Great Plains back into the Ohio Valley and along the East Coast. As we go into the weekend, that cold air will continue. We're actually going to have another shot of cold air behind a trough back over in the Northeast as we go into Friday, which actually with this cold weather could lead to some water spouts back over in the Great Lakes, which are basically tornadoes over water. So if you live over near the Great Lakes and and you might actually see a couple of water spouts during the morning hours, primarily on Thursday and Friday. As we go into Saturday and Sunday, that cold air will continue to linger across the Great Plains and all up and down the East Coast. And then during the first week of September, that's where things begin to get a little bit more uncertain. But I do think what's going to happen is that we will get a brief period of warmer weather, especially in the Great Plains. This could lead to a risk or two of severe weather. So something we'll be watching for throughout the first few days of September. But what I think is going to probably happen is that another trough is going to come out of Canada and Right behind that trough could be some of the coldest weather that we've seen in months across the country, even colder than the cold blast that we've been dealing with over the last few days across the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. Notice how the GFS model does depict an area of purple, which would be well below average temperatures, and in some cases, record-breaking temperatures in these areas. So this is something that we're going to be keeping an eye on, and we will continue to have updates on this channel regarding this upcoming weather pattern. It looks like it's going to continue to stay very interesting over the next couple of weeks. But what I will say is enjoy this weather. 
This is some of the nicest weather that we've had in quite some time. It's been brutally hot for most of the lower 48 so far this summer, but this is going to help to at least relieve a lot of you, especially in the Midwest and the Ohio Valley for the next couple of weeks and perhaps even beyond that. So these are the actual temperatures that are being forecasted over the next 7 to 10 days, beginning with today. High temperatures back over the Midwest and the Ohio Valley in the 70s, even the 60s across the Northeast. Unfortunately, in Texas, we are still in the 90s. That has not really changed much over the last several weeks. As we go into Thursday afternoon, temperatures will continue to stay right around where they'll be basically today. Notice over in Arkansas, Mississippi, many of you will only reach the 60s, if not the low 70s. That is because of showers and storms that will be ongoing throughout most of the day. Look at this on Friday morning. Temperatures could actually take a dive into the low 40s and upper 30s back over northern Wisconsin and across parts of Michigan. It is going to get cold. As we go into Saturday morning, same story, especially back over New York and Pennsylvania. Most areas will go down as low as the low 40s. A few upper 30s are going to be a possibility Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, basically the same story. We're talking about 80s and 90s across the Great Plains back over in the Northeast. Still talking about 70s. And then as we go into the middle and end of next week, that is when our next shot of cold air could make its way across the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and also the Northern Plains. This one, again, still remains uncertain as it is still over seven days from now. But if it does end up happening or if anything changes, we'll have another update in a couple days talking all about this. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel. And in case you were wondering how rare this weather pattern is, this is the first time in a long time that we've had over 12 different records either tied or broken today for daily records. That's for low temperatures this morning. Most areas across the Ohio Valley, even back over into the Dixie Alley, actually broke record-breaking low temperatures this morning. This is going to continue as we go into Thursday morning as well. Many areas along the East Coast, even back over near the Gulf Coast, will be challenging daily records, and it will likely start to taper down as we go into Friday and Saturday as temperatures will get at least a little bit closer to average, but still, most of the country being below average for temperatures. And the Climate Prediction Center does agree that below average temperatures are forecasted to continue as we go into the first week of September. This is the long-term outlook, higher than normal odds of actually having below average temperatures across areas like Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri. However, if you're back over in central southern Florida, right along the Gulf Coast, or even back over west of the Rockies, above average temperatures will likely continue as we go into the first week of September. Now, I do want to talk a little bit more about what else is happening across the country when it comes to our rainfall and even the severe weather that'll be upcoming here over the next few weeks. Beginning with what's happening today and tomorrow, we are expecting showers and thunderstorms to continue to be a problem across the central plains, including Kansas, Arkansas, and also back into Oklahoma. I am a little bit more concerned about going into overnight tonight into early tomorrow morning as we are forecasting a large area of showers and thunderstorms that could be training from northwest to southeast. What that means is showers and storms could be overlapping each other for several hours on end, which could lead to a lot of rainfall throughout the morning hours on Thursday. That could even continue into Thursday afternoon. I also think there is a window of opportunity for at least isolated severe weather Thursday in parts of Oklahoma and western Arkansas with isolated damaging wind tail and maybe even an isolated tornado being a possibility. Wouldn't rule out an, a low chance for a live stream on Thursday if that were to pan out. So that is something that we'll be keeping an eye on. Flooding though, obviously the biggest concern out of this particular event, the HRRR model is indicating over the next 48 hours that there will be a swath from Wichita, Kansas, all the way back over towards Little Rock, Arkansas, that we are likely going to see an area of 4 to 8 inches of rain. There could be some localized areas as well that pick up as much as 10 to 12 inches of rainfall out of this event. So make sure to turn around. Don't drown if you're on the roadways. This is definitely going to be one of those events where you definitely want to be staying weather aware. Have ways to receive warnings as well, because in case there is for some reason a flash flood emergency in your area and you're in a low-lying area, you need to make sure that you have a way to receive that alert. Now, for the rest of the country over the next couple of weeks, we're not really expecting much in the way of severe weather throughout the rest of August, but I do think as we go into early September, we may get a slightly more favorable weather pattern where a low pressure system or two could make their way across the Rockies. And if we are able to see that high pressure move out quick enough, at least our surface-based high pressure system, to move out fast enough back along the East Coast, that could open the door for at least a couple of days of severe weather. But at this time, it is uncertain where that'll exactly set up. I do think this is the general area to keep an eye on for at least isolated to widely scattered severe storms sometime between September 1st and 5th. But widespread or significant severe weather remains uncertain at this time as it is just too early to tell what's exactly going to happen then. And then beyond this, things become a lot more uncertain. But with all that said, the tropics, I do think, will be heating up here very soon. We only have one tropical storm in the entire Atlantic Basin, but we still have 75% of hurricane season to go. And the peak of hurricane season is only a couple of weeks away. That is on September 10th. And speaking of the tropics, this is what it looks like across the Atlantic Basin right now. Tropical Storm Fernand is far to the east.
east of the United States and is going to be moving away from the country over the next couple of days. This never did become a hurricane, but did become a strong tropical storm at one point. It will become post-tropical here within the next 24 hours. Otherwise, it is very quiet. I do want to point out, though, that the Climate Prediction Center has outlined in the long term that this is going to be an area to keep an eye on. We are watching the main development region within around the September 1st to 10th time frame for something to try to develop. We might even see something near the Central America area try to develop as we go into the second week of September. So all in all, we are keeping an eye on the weather across the tropics in the lower 48. Nothing too concerning as of right now, aside from the flooding event and obviously the temperature changes that have been really crazy here over the last week or so. That is going to continue for the foreseeable future. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Our next video will probably be either Friday or Saturday. Just depends on if anything significant does happen between now and then. So click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates. And we'll see you guys all again in the next forecast.